for what real numbers is this negative? Well, negative means less than zero. And to work that out, we're going to start by factoring this out. So factoring a quadratic like this, we need two numbers that multiply to be one and add up to be negative two. So to multiply to be the last piece, to multiply to be one, that has to be one times one. To add up to be negative two, they'd simply both be negative. So this factors to be x minus one, x minus one. So we have x minus one, x minus one is less than zero. And one way to rewrite this is as x minus one quantity squared. And is a square number ever negative? Is a square number ever less than zero? No, anytime you square a number, you get a positive or at least zero. So this never happens. There are no numbers that make this less than zero. To solve this quadratic equation, we are going to use the quadratic formula. Remember that is x equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So for us, if we just have a plain old x squared, that's the same as 1x squared. So a is 1. b will be negative 3, the number next to the x. And c will be that number on its own, that negative 1 at the end. And then we just start plugging those in. b is negative 3 plus or minus square root b is negative 3 squared minus 4 times a which is 1 times c which is negative 1 all over 2 times a which is 1 negative negative 3 is a positive 3 negative 3 squared negative 3 times negative 3 is 9 minus 4 times 1 is minus 4 that times minus 1 is plus 4 and 2 times 1 is 2. Next piece of simplifying, 9 plus 4, that gives you 13. So we have 3 plus or minus square root of 13 all over 2. And then if they want the two solutions, to do that we just break up that plus or minus. One solution is 3 plus square root of 13 over 2. The other solution is 3 minus square root of 13 over 2. And the test will never be tricky and give both of these as possible answers. They'll just give one of them, and you'll have to find that one, whichever it is. This problem basically comes down to knowing what the graphs look like. y equals x squared is your basic parabola graph, which looks like that a circle with your center at the origin and a radius of 3 looks about like that. And then how many places do these two graphs intersect? Right there and right there, two times. That's all there is to that problem. To find the slope of this line, we just use the slope formula. m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And it doesn't really matter which point is which, so I'm just going to make this be point 1 and this be point 2. So for point 1, the x was p, the y was 0. Formula has those minuses, and then point 2 will be 0 q. So the x is 0, and the y is q. q minus 0 is q. 0 minus p is negative p. So our slope is q over negative p. And remember that with a fraction, you can put the negative on the bottom, or on the top, or just out in front. And all three of these mean the same thing. One negative anywhere is still a negative on a fraction. And that's your answer, negative q over p.
Here we have a probability problem. How many different ways can you rearrange the letters A, B, C, D, E? Well, when you rearrange these, you're going to have five different letters still. So for the first choice, how many letters could you put in front? Well, A, B, C, D, E, there's five different letters. That could be the first letter. Now, once you've chosen that first letter, if you've chosen A, there's only four more letters to choose from. Or if you've chosen E, there's still only four more letters to choose from. Whatever letter you choose for the first slot, it can't go into the next slot. And then to get the, the third slot in there, well, you've already chosen two of your letters. Maybe you've chosen D and E or B and C. It doesn't really matter. The point is that whatever two letters you've chosen, there's three left to pick from. And then once you've chosen that third letter, how many are left? Only two choices are left. And then for the very, very last letter, there'll only be one left over. And you just multiply together the number of choices in each slot to get the total number of choices for all the ways to rearrange those letters. 5 times 4 is 20, times 3 is 60, times 2 is 120, times 1 is still 120. There are 120 different ways to put these five letters in order. When a problem asks for f inverse of a number, that means you take that number and instead of plugging it in for x, you plug it in for the y or for the f of x. So where we used to have f of x, we put 6 instead. And instead of plugging in for x, we solve for x now. So 6 equals 5x minus 3 over 4. We need to get the x by itself. First step, let's get rid of fractions to get rid of a divide by 4. We will multiply by 4. 4 is cancel. 4 times 6 is 24, which equals 5x minus 3. We need to get x by itself. Next step is to add 3 to get rid of a minus 3. Minus 3 and plus 3 cancel. We have 5x on the right side. 24 plus 3 is 27. Last step in getting x by itself. We need to get rid of this times 5, so we divide by 5. And x equals the fraction 27 fifths. Nothing wrong with the fraction answer. This is a recursive sequence. If you're having trouble with recursion, the best first move is to just write all the formulas we're going to use out. So they give us a n plus 1 equals 2 a n plus 1. So what happens when n equals 0? Well, a n becomes a 0. These 2 and this 1 stays the same. a n plus 1, well, 0 plus 1 is 1. What happens if n is 1? Well, 1 plus 1 is 2. a n just becomes a 1. The rest stays the same. What happens if n equals 2? Well, n plus 1. 2 plus 1 is 3. a n becomes a 2. And the rest stays the same. And these are all the formulas we'll need because we've gotten to a 3, which is what we're looking for. And now we'll just start plugging into these. They told us that a 0 is 2. So we plug that in for a 0. 2 times 2 plus 1. 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1 is 5. So 5 is a1. And we plug that in for a1 in the next formula. So 2 times a1, which we just figured out is 5, plus 1. 2 times 5 is 10, plus 1 is 11. And that's the new a2. So we take 11, which is a2 and plug it in for a2 right there. a3 now equals 2 times 11 plus 1. 2 times 11 is 22, plus 1 is 23, and that is what a3 equals, 23. Problem 19 is a probability problem. How many ways are there to choose four people out of six people? Well, that just comes down to the choosing formula. 
6 choose 4. That equals 6 factorial on top over 4 factorial times 6 minus 4 factorial. And that's from, I learned that with n and r. n choose r is n factorial over r factorial n minus r factorial. You might have used different letters, but that's the basic shape for choosing four people out of six people. So then what's six minus four? Well, that's two. So we have six factorial over four factorial, two factorial. And next, let's just write each of those factorials out. 6 factorial is 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 2 factorial is 2 times 1. And usually, a lot will cancel on these problems. And if you've got 4 on top, 4 on bottom, they cancel. 3 on top, 3 on bottom cancels. 2 on top, 2 on bottom cancels. Those 1's cancel. We really just have 6 times 5, which is 30, over 2 times 1, which is 2. 30 divided by 2 gives you your final answer, 15. If you're choosing 4 people out of 6 people, there are 15 ways to choose those people. For this problem, we need to have one of our college algebra graphs memorized. When we have something to the power x, and that something is a small number between 0 and 1, the graph of that looks like this. That's the exponential graph going up on the left and down on the right. Then they ask, what happens to the f's when a is less than b? Well, let's just make up an a and a b. We'll just put a somewhere on the left side and b somewhere on the right side. So then what points does that give us? Well, a goes to here. We have the point x is a, y is f of a, whatever that is. Over here, we have the point where x is b and y is the matching y, f of b. And then the pattern here is that f of a is always going to be above f of b. That'll happen anytime a is to the left because this is a decreasing function. The point on the left is always taller than any point on the right. So the point on the left, which would be f of a here, is always taller than, is always greater than the matching f of b. And that is what we know about this function.